Hey, what's hey, what up? up, man? Hey. What up, hey, yo? Guys. Hi. We're back. Hey, hey. We're back. Bob We're back. Time. This is Devin. This is David. This is Eric. <laughs> But uh, we're back at Bible time. Yeah, we're back after several weeks, you know. We try to put out a video every week, but with this topic, you know, we wanted to do it right, and we just felt like the timing wasn't right, and we weren't fully prepared to talk about it. So that's why it took so long, but no worries. We are here right now, and it's about to happen. It's about to right go now. down. Yep, the Lord's absolutely leading it. Open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to start in verse 23. And we're going to start this uh, sex series here, though we did the introduction, which is Romans 12, 1, about mm -hmm. offering our bodies as living sacrifices to know God's will. Um, when we're approaching sex, and we're all, we're all technically singles, right? none mm -hmm. of us are married, so we're absolutely trying to walk this path yep. and uh, understand the difficulties quite well. Um, <clears throat> and one of the biggest problems we've all had, and this is any person trying to understand God's will, like that Romans 12, 1 verse, mm -hmm. is... Why they set certain commands in place yeah. and what's it all leading to? And so we didn't want to be providing just tons of information to throw at you guys. Uh, you know, like the church does a very good job on that. So we're not necessarily trying to provide anything new, but we're trying to come with a different approach to explain why we make the choices we do. And mm -hmm. we thank God yeah. in His Word, which is why you just <clears throat> read this, provides the wisdom and understanding for where it's all going. Yeah. So back to Ephesians 5. Verse 23, this is, this is the end goal. This is marriage and what God actually has for us. I'm going to read it and we'll hopefully explain it. Um, 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. And um, <laughs> that's how we want to be able to offer ourselves to the Lord, guys. That's, that's the whole point of this life is just to be sanctified, growing closer to God. And then if you look down in verse 30, it says, For we are members of his body. And so this is a picture, clear analogy and comparison of how God has a holy covenant in marriage between a man and a woman, and it is compared to the way Christ is one with the church, so a man and a woman become one. And that is the closest thing that basically represents the love that God has for us and the oneness that we'll all have in eternity, but it's seen just in a glimpse in marriage and something to protect Oh. Marriage is, and we're not married, so we we don't we can't speak on it. We've taught like plenty of married friends, um, family friends, so we're learning constantly. But in God's word, in the way that He has this amazing blessing in marriage, it's something to protect. So then, when you're single and you're dealing with all these natural tendencies of the body and everything else, we need to know why God's even setting up these restrictions to not then just go crazy and debauchery and all those other sins, because it's not about stopping us from a good time. And it's not even necessarily about controlling, uh, just not even allowing natural urges to happen because it's your body. You're created for sex in marriage. So it's not about stopping that. It's about knowing yeah. where God's leading you. <clears throat> so I mean, we're going to look at another scripture as well right now. First Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5. And it kind of ties into the last video, you know, when we we're trying to find out the will of God for our lives. It says, for this is the will of God your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. So once we are made new in Christ, like we talked uh, in the last scripture, Romans 12, when we're new now in Christ, we now are starting to know God, right? So our his will for us is to sustain from sexual immorality and to present ourselves as a living sacrifice for him. So this first Thessalonians four, three through five, I think ties in perfectly to the last scripture we shared with you guys in the last video. God wants to bless us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. <laughs> now this isn't just so he can control us. So then we'll be able to better serve him. I mean, it's more than that. It's mm -hmm. yes, he'll serve the King, but to also receive the full joy and blessing in life. Yeah. Cool. yeah, I just kind of want to talk about for a second how um, 
as I was growing up in youth group and stuff, I had a lot of friends who would not even come to church or they didn't want anything to do with God because simply because of the fact that they thought, you know, God's against sex and he didn't want them to have sex. And so they, they thought of God, that God was trying to keep them from having fun. And like God was this, this judge that just didn't want us to have any fun. And I, I hate that they felt like that because it's not true at all. When we look at the Bible, um, I love Mike Donahue from 10th Avenue North always tells us that we have to live loved. We have to live, you know, because God loves us so much. We have to have that mindset. And when you have that mindset, then it changes everything. It, we have to, God gives us these these rules and these boundaries because he loves us. And I think it's it's crazy because the Bible, you know, it talks about how we're free, you know. When we're in Christ, we're completely free. And a lot of my friends didn't understand that. They're like, how are you free if God gives you these boundaries? But I like to think of it like a parent and a kid. You know, a parent's not just going to let a kid run wild in the street. Like, that kind of freedom is dangerous because the parent knows what the kid's going to get into. The kid has no idea. So that's that's how God is with us. And I think, especially with sex, that it's really obvious um, why God intended sex for marriage and for one man and one woman. Because, I mean, just look at our nation now, how we have, you know, all of these diseases, you know, we have all these kids without dads, their dads are just leaving because the sex was not in, in a marital context. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, babies being aborted because it was not in marital context. And it was, you know, outside of, of how God intended it for. And so I think it's important to know that God's not against sex. He wants us all to enjoy sex and he created that for us, but it's in his own context. And he's, mm -hmm. he tells us that because he loves us and he, he wants us to enjoy it to, to the maximum yeah. as much cool. as we can. And so there's a reason why he does give us boundaries. And it's hard to see that a lot of times, but I think with sex, it's, it's a little obvious. Mm -hmm. So guys, yeah, that's, that's amazing. I mean, I just yeah. learned things when you guys talk, and it's yeah. incredible. So it's obviously this this end goal of like, this is what God has for you. And if you just start here, being like, oh, I'm not a Christian, now I gotta quit everything I've been doing in life, and I gotta try to chase after this, yeah. not even knowing what you're going for, you're gonna fail. And yeah. We've had we all have crazy stories, uh, and every person does because yeah. you're not perfect. You're gonna mess up big time. So it's like the only thing to keep you centered is God's word and telling you what he has for you. Absolutely. And so we're going to, in these series, I mean, all this was talking about marriage and basically the end goal that we need to have in sight. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get into uh, all other types of conversations of sexual morality, singleness, dating. Yeah. Um, wow, here we go. Thanks, Let's guys, for listening. <laughs> and once once again, guys, we just want you to know that we don't have all the answers, but the Bible does. Jesus has it. It's written out for us. We're just trying to point you in the right places. And we do not have it figured out. We struggle just like you guys still, Dude. right? But we're just trying to live our lives in a way that is pleasing to our Lord. So we hope you guys together. get something. We're doing this together. This. That's right. It's community. We are in this together. <clears throat> we love y'all. We love you so Thanks, much. Guys. See you next week. Bye. Be safe. Bye. Peace. <laughs> I've already said that. I think it was we did the introduction with Romans 12.1. But we're going to actually talk about marriage with the end goal in sight with um, this whole sex series. Why are you laughing? It's going so no, we're good, we're good. well. Just keep going. No. Yeah, keep going.